Are you gonna talk about free home ev charging? <laughs> ev charging. Free home ev charging. It's, it's free not. Sigma it, key. Ev EV. Does free home electric vehicle charging exist? Can you actually save thousands per year by signing up for these programs offered by utility companies around the country? I've had an FPL Evolution charger at my house for over 12 months. We're working on 15 now. And I'm gonna break down this program and others like it to see if it saved me money or if free EV charging is really just a gimmick. A gimmick? Someone no, that or is it just a gimmick? Like, someone, someone look that up in the comments Tell me what that means. Gimmick? <laughs> Shane, I've got a crazy story on this install that could have seriously injured someone in my family. So we're gonna dive into that in just a little bit. But first, I've looked at several different EV charging solutions. I've done reviews on different types of chargers, and I'm gonna show you exactly how many miles you have to drive to make the program worth the investment. If you don't live in Florida, there's several utility companies across the country that offer different incentives and levels of free charging. Unfortunately, each one is different. They all carry their own advantages or disadvantages. Some of the companies like California PG&E, Southern California Edison, San Diego Gas and Electric offer sub-metering, which is primarily what we're talking about here. They offer sub-metering to get low-cost charging. Obviously, this kind of thing changes all the time, so you're gonna need to check with your local provider to see what they offer. But I'll go ahead and put something up that kind of summarizes the research that I've done on free charging really across the country here in the U.S. I'm going to talk specifically about my experience with the Florida Power and Light program called Evolution. The program comes with a free level two charger install. It's limited to 40 amps. I'll talk more about that later. And it comes complete with the permit and everything. If you already have a permitted 50 amp outlet, they can do it for 32 bucks a month. Or if you have them install it, they'll do it for $38 a month. But it's on a 10 year contract. This technically only includes charging for one vehicle, but I've heard of folks that charge multiple vehicles on their single charger. So I think it's possible, but the program terms and conditions say that it's just for one vehicle. The FPL program specifically comes with Wallbox branded EV chargers. They're level two chargers. They're connected to your home's Wi-Fi. You'll need to set that up on the day of the install and they automatically report your electricity usage back to FPL. As long as you're charging off peak, that varies by spring and summer and fall and winter. The hours during spring and summer are like peak hours are from noon to nine right now. So after 9 p.m. all the way until noon the next day, you can charge unlimited for free. All of those kilowatt hours are reported back to FPL through their app that they install and through Wi-Fi that's in your home and you get credit for all of that energy use on your FPL bill every month. But that ensures that as long as you're not charging on peak hours, you're gonna get the free charging at either 32 bucks or 38 bucks a month. Also, after 10 years, the charger's yours to keep. And this may or may not be a win. I don't know, technology may have changed drastically in 10 years and level two charging might not be what it is right now. But I mean, for right now, you're talking about getting like a $400 EV level two charger installed and permitted for free. So you have to factor that into any cost considerations that you have here. Another program term and condition is you have to have a garage to park in. They don't install these boxes outside from what I can tell. So if you wanna use the program, you have to have a garage that they can install it in and it's gotta be within 10 feet of your electrical panel. If you do decide to charge at peak times, they tack on an extra surcharge. So you're gonna wind up paying actually more than what you would if you just had a standard level two charger in your house. And that's kind of a tip, right? So if you're gonna charge during the peak hours of one of these programs, you should probably get <laughs> or keep a second charger on hand, which we have, so that if I need to charge in the middle of the day or something during peak hours, I don't wanna pay that surcharge. I can just plug in my other level two charger and actually use that without having to pay a surcharge on top of it. And then one last consideration, the termination fee is 800 bucks. It's prorated over the life of the program. So it's definitely something that if you do cancel, you wanna pay attention to that because you could end up paying a lot of that back if you end up canceling before the 10 years is up. So like I said, the charger has to be located within 10 feet of the electrical panel. They don't wanna spend a lot of money on expensive like eight gauge or 
in my case, six gauge wire to run any more than, than 10 feet. They also use a conduit and they only bring so much of that when they do the install. They want to hardwire it into the box, but they won't run the wires through the wall because they said they need to be able to get it out easily if that's uh, an issue down the road and they want to uninstall it for one reason or another. This could be a problem for you. Like, let's say you don't like to back your Tesla and you want to pull it in forward with your charge ports in the back. Or if you have something that is not a Tesla, like, you know, a Ford Lightning or something of that nature, and you can't pull it in forward where the charge ports on the front, now your charge cable can't actually reach all the way to the back of your vehicle. I reached out to a company called EV Dance and they sent me a 20 foot 50 amp extension cable. So it just plugs in the J1772 into the charger, just plugs into the end of the FPL Evolution charger. And it gives me like an extra, basically 25 feet. So I can charge vehicles outside of the house, um, outside of the garage. I can charge vehicles that are parked in the wrong way into the garage, like where the port is on the other side and something that I couldn't typically reach with the FPL Evolution cable. They have tons of other electric EV chargers, level one, level two chargers, all kinds of stuff. So if that's something that you're interested in, I have a 20% off code. I'm going to link to that down in the description below. You can use that code to get 20% off anything in their store, including this really snazzy 20 foot cable that's actually come in really handy for me. Definitely something you want to check out for them. Like I was saying, <laughs> My install did not go as smoothly as one would anticipate. The permit was handled by a company out of Michigan and another contractor actually did the install for me. First off, it, it took two months from permitting all the way through the installation process. It took forever. The permit process had me go find a notary so that I could get documents signed. I had to send them pictures. I mean, like several rounds of pictures. I had to do all the legwork for the install, draw out diagrams and all that kind of stuff. Literally this company only submitted the permit application on my behalf. And I feel like after all that legwork, I probably could have just gone down and done it myself. Honestly, it took a long time to get all those things together and the back and forth with those guys. And then we finally got it scheduled. We got it, we had it scheduled in December. When the crew finally showed up, they didn't have the right tools. <laughs> it seemed like the first day on the job for some of those guys. And then they didn't have the correct wire size and they didn't have the proper breaker size for it either. They didn't have the right breaker for my panel, which is odd because I sent them all the pictures and everything beforehand. They actually borrowed my drill bit because they didn't have the right drill bit to do what they were trying to do. They tore up the chuck on my drill. I mean, I, it's to the point where I had to replace it because they ground it down to a nub where it was completely unusable. It was a keyless chuck on a cordless drill. They tore the whole thing up. But here's the kicker. While trying to drill into the side of the electrical panel from outside the sheetrock in the garage, they drilled straight through my interior wall while my daughter was sitting in her bed. It was literally inches from her head and into her wall while she was surfing Instagram or whatever it was that she was doing. Thankfully, she was okay, but not exactly what you want happening during an install. We ended up having to patch the hole, sand it down, patch it again, paint it, go through the whole process. It was extremely laborious. I also told you I was going to talk about the charge speed a little bit and 48 amps versus 40. Now you have to have a hardwired box in order to get 48 amps and they were going to install eight gauge wiring. Well, according to the NEC, you're limited to a 55 amp breaker on an eight gauge wire. And that's simply not big enough for me because a breaker has to be sized at 125% of the continuous load and 100% of a non-continuous load and electric vehicle chargers are probably considered a continuous load given that you're going for four, five, six, seven, eight hours. With 48 amp charging versus 40 amp charging, I can actually charge 20% faster than what I would have been able to charge on the smaller breaker. I asked them to install six gauge wire and after all the hassle that we had, including drilling through the wall, I think they just felt like that was something they should do and they did. They put in six gauge wire for me so I am able to charge at a full 48 amps. I should also throw in there that when I was checking the wire size, the ground wire just came off of the conductor and I ended up having to put it back on again. Incentives? Okay, look, let me get back to this incentives. All right, let's get back to this group. Let's talk numbers, okay? Over 13 months, I would have spent about 1500 bucks charging my Tesla on regular published electricity rate. 
This is the calculation that I completed. You can see that on the chart with the FPL Evolution program, I paid about 500 bucks for the FPL Evolution service during that time instead of the $1,500. That means I spent roughly a third of what I would have spent had I paid the full electric rates during that period. So for me, that was a huge saving. Specifically, what's the break even point on this? Uh, during that time, I drove 26,625 miles in 13 months. So I saved pretty big, but for it to actually be worth it, you need to drive a minimum of 700 miles per month or 8,400 miles per year. Now, I think the mileage average is 10 to 12,000 miles per year. So I think pretty reasonably you could expect to come in under that threshold. If you drive more than 8,400 miles per year, you are definitely going to save money. If you drive less, you're technically losing money, but you really have to consider the free $500 charger and the install cost that you didn't have to pay for and the permitting and all that kind of stuff, because otherwise you would have had to pay for those things. So let me know in the comments. Is this something that you would sign up for? Is this something that you're interested in? I think it's a valuable program. I know that there's a break even point that you need to get to for it. Don't forget to subscribe for more EV type stuff, EV breakdowns. I've reviewed a lot of EV chargers over the years and really love focusing in on batteries and EV type stuff. Thanks for watching.